day three than it is at the World Rugby Under-20 Championship. We're here at the Donny Craven Stadium in Stellenbosch. And our next big match is between Ireland and Fiji. There's a lot of Irish support in the stadium too. And uh, having a look at the pools, well, there we have it then. Wales with that good victory over Japan. And uh, France very much the dominant factor in that pool. Well, Pool B is an interesting one too. So you can see Ireland and England drew that match, but Ireland beat Australia well. So England very much at the top of that pool with Ireland and uh, the Australians with everything to play for, of course. Fiji are out of the race. And Pool C, the pool of death, this is where it's all happening. And we've just had that victory of Georgia over Italy, which pushes the Georgians to the top of the bench. And, uh, well, South Africa and Argentina, everything to play for in their match a bit later today. So confirmation that that's our match that is being played, Ireland and uh, Fiji. And the last time they played, the Irish actually got three penalty tries down in New Zealand. So it showed the dominance again of their forward pack. So, Jermut Mangan and uh, Moti Murray are the two captains. Our referee is Mone Ferreira from South Africa. Well, Mone Ferreira will maybe find it a little bit easier communicating, of course, in uh, the English language with uh, the two captains. That's the Irish team then, and Diomut Mangan is the captain of the team. They've uh, made 11, uh, 12 changes rather from the team that played in the last game, which is no reflection on the previous players, but it's the opportunity that's been given to all of the players to have their, op their chance of playing in this under 20 championship. Fijians, well, they've uh, only made three changes. One is a positional change. Um, so they've sort of kept the, 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 the main team that has been playing all the way through. Um, and, well, their big question is, what sort of rugby will they play today? We know that they like their adventurous style. We know that they are excellent sevens players. Will their pack of forwards be able to manage the Irish pack? So uh, the two flag bearers are out on the park there with uh, the Fijian and the Irish flag. And uh, the teams come out together, as is traditional at the Under-20 Championship, the Under-20 World Cup, where the teams come out together. There is no home and away team. And for many of these players as well, these conditions are, or these uh, stadia are ones they've not really played in before. Just bear in mind too that uh, Irish players will be wearing black armbands and we're going to have a minute silence fairly soon for following the tragic death of Greg Oliver, the father of Jack Oliver, the scrum half of uh, the Fijians, who sadly died yesterday in an accident down in Cape Town. They're also wearing black armbands, armbands to commemorate the death of two 18-year-olds in Greece and uh, two young guys that were at school and know many of the Irish players. Our condolences go to the family of Greg Oliver. Standing. Uh, we will have the national anthems now of Ireland and Fiji.
So what we do await right now is the cultural exchange, which is uh, reminiscent of the New Zealand haka, where the challenge is put out to the opposition by the Fijians. And uh, the Irish will stand steadfast in defence thereof, and uh, obviously their response to accept the challenge and uh, see if they can come out victorious today. Interestingly enough, these are the only two teams where the Rugby World Cup Under-20 has never been played in, in their country. And he has a, a wonderful gesture as well um, of uh, the Fijians handing over a jersey to uh, the Irish in commemoration of uh, the death of Greg Oliver yesterday. It's a fine gesture. So that's the challenge then that comes from the Pacific Islanders. Teams will regroup, but uh, the Fijians, as is traditional as well, they hold the ball aloft, everyone's hands up on the ball. As uh, their last gesture as well, and their hope for some good luck in uh, this particular match. We know the Fijians are very, very serious about uh, their rugby, and also serious about their religion, and uh, have very, very strong beliefs. So Mone Ferreira is uh, our ref, as we mentioned a, a little bit earlier. He will be supported by Ben Sh uh, Breakspear from Wales and Stefan Geldenhuis from South Africa. Our TMO is Brett Cronin from Australia. Mone Ferreira, who's actually refereed uh, in the Six Nations as well as uh, the World Sevens Series. So it'll be Ireland with the kickoff. Matthew Lynch is... Uh, at standoff half for the Irish, starting immediately with a pretty deep kick in. In fact, it's a great kick that puts all sorts of pressure on the Fijians. Yes, go, go, go. Philip Basalala is at scrum half for the Fijians, who find themselves in their own 22. Last field green. Made sure that they secured the ball. Use it. Standing at uh, by half, there's Isaiah Ravula, who uh, gets it safely into touch uh, with me, former Springbok prop forward Rob Kempson. Rob, a good start to the day with the previous match Fiji. that we had, which was a real contest. This one, the Fijian, they're capable of producing some magic. Uh, that they certainly are. But it's even around the seventh circuit, and what they can achieve with that, it's just their set piece, particularly line outs, it tend to be a factor in the game. Oh, well, that's where they struggled the last time out. These two teams met in New Zealand, where the Irish won three penalty tries because of uh, illegal defensive work of the Irish, of the Fijians. And here come the Irish now. This is a very good pack of forwards. It's a very good team too. They'll be spurred on to by the tragic losses that have occurred in the last couple of days. Everyone playing for the Oliver family. Playing and praying, of course. On the top side. But it's close in now that the, the big battle comes for the, the try line. They are just that close. The Irish, the dive through. Now, was that ball grounded? Dan Barron with a pickup. Ten I think. offside. That. So Ravula was the man who was offside and for a penalty uh, to Ireland, who probably would hit for the line out, wouldn't they? I don't think they're going to opt for posts. Eh? Down in this area of the field, they tend to want to come away with five pointers, not seven. That would be a good start to their day, too. Look at this in the middle of the lineup, please. It's good defense from Lines Fiji. Managing to hold out the Irish Mall first up, and a couple of pick and goes. Defense for the moment holding intact. 
Thrown from Danny Sheehan. Finds his marker. But, uh, that's a penalty. Double banking in the line out since the supporter has just got in behind his jumper. Fine of, lines, eh? Rob, one of the one of the great things for Fiji this tournament has a they've converted 100% of their kicks. So Ravula at fly half is a very accurate goal kicker. He's in fact the nephew of uh, Richie Mononga of uh, New Zealand. Got right in behind the jump pad, just not allowing the opposition to have a fair crack at him to sack them all. Well, the throwing from Naya Norma is uh, over the top and over the back. The Fijians want to just keep their error rate down. It's one thing that they don't want to have is problems with that. Now, the little chip kick through that might run into touch in goal, and so it does. So they'll come back. That's an option. There's an option for the captain. Grumble 22. Is surely going Grumble to take 22. It's quite a way downfield. Grumble 22. 22 option. Oh, yeah, the 22. No, I, think, I think they'll go for the 22. <laughs> Just would have got a lot more territory with a, a scrum down. Yeah, of course, they immediately release the ball to the opposition. Well, in most cases, Rabula will probably try and kick it as far as he can. There's the deep kicking on to Sam Berman, who's on debut today. He came out uh, as a replacement. Of course, the Irish have got a couple of red cards during the course of this tournament. So they've, uh, of course, run out of players. Take him back. Oscar Cawley with uh, the pass. The Fijians are often like to run from these positions. But, uh, the defensive wall of Ireland very quickly organized. Rabula. And that's not out. Taken there by Matthew Lynch. Looking for some support. Coming back in field was Andrew Osborne. And then carried up uh, by Joe Hopes. He's with Evan O'Connell uh, in the lock positions. And they've got another penalty. Well, again, Outside. Fiji have got to be careful with the penalties they give away. They've conceded far too many during the course of this tournament. <laughs> Safely into touch then from Matthew Lynch. Fiji on me. Want to get some points out of this. Fair amount of pressure going in. No information about the offsides. Fair access to the jumper. Oh, right, and they're just uh, trying to retreat in the middle. getting in the way of the ball carrier. Come in. So Danny Please, Sheehan in. now with a throw in. Here we go. Here, Munster. It's 11. Over the 15. Leinster players in the, this squad. And half of this team is from Leinster too. The Irish run on team. Very well organized team. This is Aldermid Mangan, the captain of the team. Quickly out from Cordy. Oh, it's all about defense right now for the Fijians. Time will come where they might just release it a little bit wider, but they don't need to at the moment. They go fly for the line and they've got the try. Might be Brian Gleason who scored that try. And just to go with his player of the match against Australia last up. Staying pressure coming in from Ireland. The runners are plenty. This one taken off the fluff. A strong carry from Brian Gleason gets over for Ireland. It was wave of wave. With pressure mounting on the defense of Fiji. Decent manages to get through a number of tackles to get Ireland's first try. And he really created some comfort for that ball too, to make sure that it was held in. In an effective grasp from him. Sadly, the Irish have got the worst kicking record at this tournament <laughs> to date. So Matthew Lynch has a chance to rectify that today. And he's absolutely spot on. <laughs> Uh, 
just coming around the corner. All square up and trying to bring those defenders up to the defensive line. He has a strong carry to get over the line from Brian Gleeson. The whiz kid Sam Vendergast is on the bench today at fly half. He uh, hasn't had a, a fantastic tournament kicking wise. And of course, he's a highly rated player and a really good one at that. Now Lynch. That's and uh, an excellent kick that from Matthew Lynch. Just hugs the touchline, but they back in the Fijian half of the field. Fiji on the line. Fijian's fingertips got to that, so Arlen will get the put into the line out. Proper attacking option they've got from the back line. Throw to Evan O'Connell on this occasion. The back's free running. There's a man that enjoys running with the ball too, Harry West, as does Andrew Osborne. Cooley. Lynch, and then that's just to bring the, the big forwards into play. West. Oh, that's a really strong tackle there from Finau. They've got advantage here. With now Barrett carrying it in, making sure they've secured the possession. They know that they've got advantage now. Osborne. Back in field they go. And they kept that ball alive initially, but they'll come back for the penalty. And again, Ireland, I presume, will kick for the corner. Captain. Captain. One for high tech over here, or they're not running over there. Oh, yeah. well, they're not going to take the scrum, they'd rather go for the line out, which is the better option. Yeah, the option, so either there or yeah. Okay, Fiji Another chance here for the Irish, Danny Sheehan will get the message of where this ball's going to go in the line out. From uh, his loose head prop, George Haddon. In between Joe Hopes and Evan O'Connell, they've got some tall timber in the line out, but uh, they're driving excellent, and here they come again. Saging for the line, there they go. It's another try. Danny Sheehan, the driving more. Finally set yeah, this time around, no double banking. Still managed to get a perfect set, the height right from all the forwards in behind. The jumper and in the pocket is Danny Sheehan. He'll get the try, the second one for Ireland. So Matthew Lynch with another opportunity from a, a fairly similar position to he judged the last kick extremely well. Well, this time he's pulled it past the left hand upright but they're into double figures are the irish rob just a, a question too in this tournament as we have a look at that try being scored there it almost seems like the conditions have favored the northern hemisphere teams who are used to playing in these conditions you played a lot in ireland so you <laughs> yeah. know about that and the surfaces as well gav i mean you know, they have artificial surfaces now these lads would normally play on the outer fields um, which are generally clay based quite slippery as well so all the fields seem to have almost been prepared for the Northern Hemisphere sides. Well, it's Fiji now with a strong comeback there from the kick-in. Turnover's good. Well, it's a great turnover that. And still they come there, Fijians. They'll have a lot of support here too, I can tell you, because people like the type of rugby they play. Leave it green! Always uh, reminds me of the Kenyans. We'll be hosting uh, the other tournament, the trophy tournament for under 20s. And that will uh, take part, take place at the culmination of this tournament, the championship. Have they got the patience now and the ability to retain possession? 
the Fijians. Very up there from Magoon. Dravula quickly through the hands to Fina. Now the Irish are being tested defensively for the first time really in the match as such. The big men sort of carrying it up there. Nat Nora. Now, this is really a good to test of the defence here yeah, of the Irish. Natnora again with a pick up. And they've won a penalty. So five. Fiji. Wait, wait, no, no. There's no ways. I think the mark first. They're going to kick it goal. Tap and go as quickly as possible. They learned that in sevens, didn't they? Captain. Just got to get back to the mark. Captain. Joe hopes he caught off sides there. Over there on the 15. So can they replicate offside. what we've seen from Ireland at line-out time? That's, of Probably course, if they kick right. for the corner, which I'm sure they will do. On the 15. What about a quick tap, Kev? <laughs> Not from a fly-off. <laughs> ah, there they go. It will be tap and go. They're banking on those forwards. Brave decision, yeah, by Fiji. Will it pay off for them? Green last feet. Will they find a way through this resolute Irish defence? Pick up and carry, pick up and carry. Spoke about patience, how important that is. Last feet, green. Advantage. No, it's not uh, on side there. Uh, some of the feet inside the field of play. But they've got to try. And as I said, brave is the word. And Captain. brave Captain. is the answer. But let's need to work harder to get back behind the last body part here. This one number two. Everyone around the fringe just needs to take that half a step. Uh, so the referee's picked that up, Rob. <laughs> he's picked that up. Moses Magoon with a try. Well, he's claiming it, that's for sure. Yeah, Pick and go. Big body's been flung at the line. And eventually, is the loose head prop. Moses Magoon that gets over for Fiji. Funny. All that pressure amounts to a try for them. Well, that's excellent play by the Fijians. Just to stay in this race, they don't want this game to run away with him. Spent a lot of time in these uh, early 15 minutes of the game in their own half of the field. Found their way down. Ravulo, who's been exceptional with his goal kicking. Oh, perfect technique once again from Ravula to get the extra two points. Bit of a try first in the opening 20 half. But Fiji, pick and go, managing to get through the defence of Ireland. And a really good conversion as well. Matthew Lynch going down the, the middle of the park. Ravula now all the time in the world to pick his spot. Hasn't kicked it out. Maybe purposefully so. Harry West with a catch. Oh, strong tackle on Manga there. One of the Fijians has gone down the roof. Might want to blow his whistle. Took a big knock there, but uh, he's back on his feet is uh, one of honor. Irish getting enough possession to make a nuisance of themselves. Out from Corley, Lynch, West, down the line. Now a real chance for Osborne, out on the left wing. Back in field he goes. Excellent play from the left winger. And the pickup was maybe, or the direction was maybe not the right choice. In touch. Oh, we might have wanted to bring it out to the open side. Is he on the ground? Who's happening up there? No, what's happening? Excellent play from uh, the men in green. Little slot of hand to get it out wide. Into the trams and a 
Excellent run down the touchline. Back on the inside, managed to get through the tackle. Just attempt to pick and go, the knock on coming from Ireland. So that's the full B as it stands at the moment, with Ireland uh, comfortably in the lead if they retain where they are at the moment. Which, uh, if you have a look and do your sums, England and Australia. They have a chance if they get a five-pointer to go ahead, but then Ireland might still get four tries in this game. They've already got two of them. That'll give them five points. And that'll make it uh, almost impossible then for them to be caught. Bear in mind that uh, the way they conduct the semi-finals essentially is all the teams are seeded from 1 to 12. And then as you finish from 1 to 12, so essentially your top four there would constitute the semi-finals. The only two teams that cannot make the semis at the moment are Fiji and Finland at the moment and the Japanese. They don't have enough points to pose that threat. Vasilala with a put-in. Absolutely decimated the scrum there did the Irish referee waiting for advantage. Now they've got men out wide. West up from the fullback position has done well. He might have just wanted uh, Nicholson to maybe come in and do a little switch. But the referee's going to come back for a penalty. And that scrum, Rob, absolutely decimated. <laughs> The set piece is always going to be the question mark over Number Fiji. One. It's the Angle. reason for taking the tap as opposed to going for the line out for the earlier try. But strong scrum from Ireland. Gets the turnover, gets the advantage, gets the penalty. And another driving wall to come. Well, Harry West spending a lot of time in the back line as well from the full back position. He's allowed to do so because of the position that the Irish have had. Again, it's a good line out. Again, it's a good set. Again, it's a good driving ball. We can't say yet. It's, again, it's a try, but they're getting very really close to it. On the line, Fiji on the line. Now they're Balls forced available. up at the moment, so oh, down it goes. Short. They are millimeters short, the Irish. But it's Fiji offside. There's the pass, there's the drive, but once again, some courageous tackling there from the Fijians. But they've got the try eventually, Ireland. George Haddon, as Moses Magoon had done on the other side of the field. George Haddon has got Ireland's third. And just the pressure from the driving wall, from the scrum, the set piece, and the picking guys. Eventually getting the try. Difficult to defend, particularly with the men surging for the line. Uh, little Basilala, the scrum off trying to stop the, the surge. So up to 17 they are. Should be a, a tap over for Matthew Lynch with the conversion. But no one wants to count his chickens before they hatch. Well, you could have. He's absolutely stroked it through, and they're up to 19. running from Devine just to get it ooh, a little bit closer and the pick and go for the line with George Haddon the halfway mark then in the, the first half is uh, Ravula looks to get us going again as I Ravula and the Fijians with a little tap down which is uh, also a skill that they learned in sevens rugby Just tapping it down to a player following up and Ireland just not getting to the apex of their ball with that jumping pod yeah. get up ahead of them get it back probably a little poor from an Irish perspective with O'Connell and Joe Hopes they're, they're, they're two tall timbers in the middle of the line outs also the men quite often that are receiving those kicks the time the ball knocked down not forward this is the place to put pressure on Ireland essentially the Virginians must know that they've really got to get into the Irish half and 
Hold on to possession, but they need a, a stable scrum. Which they, they sort of half got on that occasion. Ravula with a run around. Quick offload there from Navonavana to keep the continuity going for the Fijians. Generally have got a uh, pretty good skill set, but they've got to look after the ball. Playing the ball on the ground. And holding on there for the Jim, so the Irish get out of jail. Interesting thing as well, Rob, you know, we've seen the, the strength of Irish rugby all the way through um, up to the senior ranks too. But they only seeded eighth in this tournament, and of course that comes from the previous tournament, which was last held in 2019, prior to the pandemic, down in Argentina. And Sheehan have got his hands onto that ball. The same one that's been throwing in the line out. Well, that's not straight. And, uh, not that the Fijians will be welcoming the scrum. <laughs> oh well, I'm not sure. Maybe they want to, but they're not holding. They're not holding their own there. Well, they've gone for the scrum, so they don't pack their line up very much either. Under pressure in the scrum, one penalty from it so far. Now, people often ask me as well about, and I can't give it the answers like you can, but the, the importance of technique in the scrum. You know, sometimes you might be lighter than the opposition, but you have better technique, which stands you in good stead. That's the collective as well. Technique certainly plays a role. The ability of number one and number three. Ravola with the hoist. That's a great kick that onto Harry West. Competition coming from uh, the Fijians from Nalaga on that occasion with the tackle. They've held on to it, have the Irish. Back from Corley. Matthew Lynch. Just taken back, so he keeps it in field. Now, can they counter-attack from here? This is the one of honor. Uh, in fact, if not, it's uh, Bakalala, the fullback. He's been helped back towards his own try line. Back they come again. Fiji holding on to it. It'll be another hoist from him. This time a, a torpedo. So it's swinging around in the air. McEarlean, who's at fullback, not Harry West. Okay, the kick downfield. White always advancing. Always advancing. 13. So the interesting thing there, we look at that number 15, is the number 15 for Ireland is McEarlean, and he was actually down to be on the bench today. Uh, but uh, the team sheet we were given had, uh, had West down as uh, Henry West as the fullback. So we take note of that. Again, it's a throw in for Danny Shear, and he's had a good day with uh, the lineouts. This time, uh, commentators curse again. Fiji will welcome the opportunity uh, to maybe get out of their own half of the field. Now, the kick across field. Got some tall guys in their side, so often that can be useful. With the knock on coming from Ireland. The one thing you can guarantee to expect from Fiji thumping tackles. And they're putting a number of those in at the moment. Sam Berman having an interesting debut. Took the knock on that occasion. He arrived in South Africa earlier this week as a, a replacement. There's one of those tackles. That was on James Nicholson. Well, they 
have been some strong tackles on both sides and the two teams well enjoying a, a drink of water now too yeah, the ball lost forward by james nicholson as well by sam berman successful tackle su ta their tackle success and looking very very strong too and they're looking very well organized are the irish they would have been disappointed with the draw that they had with england in the first game at 34 all but they gave australia a good hiding in the next game so they are growing in stature with the men from the emerald isle but used to doing quite a lot of kicking. Macaulay back for it. Stop well. That's a good kick downfield too. It doesn't get the bounce he would have wanted. Goes to Wakalala, and then gives it to Ravula. So they remain in the Fijian half of the field. And it will be a, a throw-in for Danny Sheehan again. Lots of lineouts, lots of kicking too from two teams that uh, you wouldn't have expected as much. Five men in the Irish lineout. They're comfortable that O'Connell and Hopes can do the trick for them. Mangan with the, or rather Barron with a the pass there. And then, Uncharacteristic knock on there from uh, the Irish, John Devine from Connett. The line outs not quite going according to plan. This time they won it. The pass a little bit slow to get to the 12 running onto it. Ulster man, Joe Hopes did uh, all the hard work initially. As they normally do get. I was waiting for that too. <laughs> no, Rob, there's uh, a lot of Leinster players in this team. Not too many Ulster men. Completely outnumbered. <laughs> Ravula. A, a little bit of a show and go initially. One thing the Fijians do have is the ability to weave through gaps too. They find space on the field. We go again once again they have that opportunity not enough space to work with but still they come good strong running as well from Navona Vona and they realize it's very important for them to get the next score yeah they've got men coming at pace well that pass has gone forward so referee will play advantage here yeah. there's a disappointing end that one feels too to the Fijian attack Lovely down the touchline, the slots of hand, keeping the ball alive. This is Murray. He's carried really well, Rob, in uh, Maji Murray during the course of this tournament. And he's also made the most tackles leading into today's uh, six matches. I think he's had to. <laughs> he's had no choice. <laughs> but uh, he, of course, the captain of the side as well, Maji Murray. comes out and I'll tell you what everyone's thirsting themselves to we'll have a look at pool B there and uh, Ireland obviously in a very strong position grown in stature as the tournament has progressed and today of course they are playing for their brother matches are down at the Athlone Stadium and there's just been a kickoff there with England and Australia. 
So uh, all eyes on whatever social media or digital opportunities you have of conveying information to uh, the other venues for the teams. And this time it's a full go from the Fijians at the scrum. Irish on the back foot, but they've really done well. They've regrouped. Poorly. Mangan taking it in and winning a penalty too. Exactly what Fiji didn't want. They had the pressure on Ireland. They had all they do was exit. Even away. A silly penalty. Brian Gleeson, how will he do at the base of that scrum under huge pressure from Fiji? He really did well to get the pick and go. So a strong carry from Mangan. Has a word there with Moses Magoon. So look at the penalties there. Fiji, all of them but one. Another short line out for the Irish. Seems to be working well for them. Helps to open up the game somewhat as well. Captain Diamond Mangan, such a strong runner with the ball. This is Evan O'Connell. And then Mangan comes away with it. Really is making a nuisance of himself, isn't he? The captain. Perhaps enjoying the front foot ball that he's getting too. And the last time they were here, they scored a try. Can they do it again? This time the pickup from Haddon, previous try scorer. I was happy to just pick and go, pick and go, pick and drive, should I say. Stay on oh, where the Fijians down at the breakdown point. Just those uh, centimeters by centimeters, and now the change of direction. Short. Still just short of the line while well, the referee's gonna uh, he's gonna have a look. Somewhere that ball might have been grounded. Bear in mind we've got smart ball technology too. On for decision as try as I do have a grounding. I just want to make sure that the guy playing the ball is actually on his feet before scoring the try. Okay, on field try, we're checking for grounding and making sure the player's on his feet. Agree. No one's the head there. Uh, legal the Irish eyes are smiling at the moment. Just getting the angers now, mate. No problem. see where that ball is there it is there the ball was carried to or over the line that's clear as the referee said did the player Morning, hey, stick with your on-field decision on the try thank you it's see a lot more than we could <laughs> A try being awarded. Very difficult to overturn a try once the referee has said it has been. Might have been a little bit difficult too to work out who scored the try, but it looks like it's been given to Brian Gleason. Again, this strong carry after strong carry. It is Gleason that gets his hands in it. It's actually a better angle that from the rear. He's on his feet and he managed to get the ball down. Second drive for Gleason, then, and uh, that's the fourth try. So that's already a bonus point for the Irish, which they'll be really happy with on the stroke of half time. Lynch with two conversions to date. Oh, 
Am I going to make that three? That's Brian Gleeson in picture. Two tries to his name in the first half. Looks like the Virginians are going to bring on a replacement, which is perhaps unusual at this stage, just before half time. It's going to be Nolasi that's coming on. Okay. As uh, Rob Kempson's pointed out to me, it was a knock on the head of one of the Virginians. All bobbing about all over the place. Novula. Goes from Barcelona. Nice efficient service from the base of the scrum from Barcelona. Now they come, the Fijians. They've got some extra men. Barcelona was waiting for it, but they got quick ball. Have they got enough men to do the trick here? They found themselves in this position a little bit early on, and then conceded a penalty. Better play from Fiji. Taken up by May. Nagula. Looking to sidestep there was Finau. All the way through the Irish defence. Good clean out as well from Fiji. Just to open up things for the scrum of Basilala. A real test now for the Irish defensively. One thing the Virginians do when they've got the ball in hand, they run very hard at you. And time almost take you out of the way. Advantage. Penalty advantage to Fiji. Still like everyone searching for a bit of extra space there to get over the try line. Taken in by Natnoa. Can they work the blind side? No hands now. It would be appropriate timing if the Fijians could get a try now. Just keeps them in the race somewhat. They're behind by 19 points at the moment. For the Irish, it's all about their defence being tested. Still, they come. The Fijians. Last feet green. Pick up and go has been the order of the day. Now what do they do? Pretty much the same old, same old. A short on the goal line. They're very close to the goal line now. Once again, just hold up short. That's a double movement. Well, the Irish were offside, there was a double movement there, so he was obliged to blow his Captain. whistle. Captain. That should be a penalty. That was a choice. High tackle. That was a high tackle high penalty. Tackle. Offside, 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 offside penalty, a little bit closer to the calls. Which is one option I don't think they'll be taking. Offside and high tackle. Number two. It's Danny Shea and it's uh, maybe a pick and go, Rob. Yeah. Right tackle. Pick and go it is. Part of their rugby tradition. We don't always find teams picking and going. Now out it goes. That's better play from them. And Ravula is in. Just a little bit of space on the outside. Isaiah Ravula. Has got him for Fiji. Exactly what Ireland did down on the other side of the field. The pick and go. This time they unleashed the back line with a little bit of space, and it's always been down that left flank that they've managed to get a bit of purchase. This time, Ravula gets the try. It's almost like they had opportunities prior to that to just play into the second channel or a little bit wider, where there's a bit more space to work with. I suppose, you know, these are 18, 19, 20-year-old boys. 
They all want to score tries in there. They want the action. Stick to the system, I guess. <laughs> well, what is the system? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Really successful with one conversion as I Ravula. This time it's past the right hand upright. He's almost got a kicking style like his uncle, Richie Mwanga. A quick chop at it. That's the try that he scored. Well, did you ever kick a conversion? Penalties and conversions. <laughs> Both of them. <laughs> at school when you were playing flower. <laughs> Frustrated flower for that. But. We heard the hooter in the background, so... Another's good. No, it's not yeah, white. I think it's going to come out Irish side now. There was a knock-on. Oh, there was a knock-on, so that's going to surely be half-time. <laughs> so it is. Irish will go into half-time. Knowing they've been tested on many occasions, but very comfortable with a lead of 26 points to 12.
in this tournament too. You saw some of those stats a little bit earlier, Rob, which you spoke about, and uh, you mentioned the penalties they conceded Fiji. Obviously, that is a worry for them. Um, but they, they'll be happy that they've sort of had a, a, enough possession to do something with it. Yeah, they've made a game of it, there's no question. Really attacking flair there. There's been quite a bit of kicking, but certainly from the perspective of Fiji, they've kept the ball more in hand. They've tried to. Stayed away from driving malls very much. So Ireland very much at the top at the moment there. That's of course as it stands at the moment, bearing in mind it could change of course. And England are playing up against Australia. They uh, are ahead by seven points to three when we last heard. Fiji out of it completely. So, you know, England really fighting for the opportunity there. Obviously I'm getting four tries too and a bonus point. Then it, then it will be down potentially to the difference in points. So th these pools are very, very tight, one's got to say. Well, we started off this tournament with plenty of rain, and uh, but the sun shines out here in Cape Town, and uh, I also just believe that uh, the weather reports are that the rain is something of the past. <laughs> you never quite know. Um, but it does provide for a better opportunity of uh, viewing some exciting rugby and playing some exciting rugby too. So that, that last game there in Auckland in 2014, which is a long time ago, was uh, won by the Irish. And that, those 38 points included three penalty tries that were scored as they swamped the Fijians. And they did the same as well in 2013. So they have not lost against uh, the Fijian nation at this uh, level, under-20s. It's interesting as well, the, the Irish have uh, had so many players that have gone through the ranks, you know. Uh, Connor Murray in particular, with 114 test matches, is the most represented guy who's been through the under-20 ranks. When you look at the number of statistics of, of players that have gone from here to international level, it's maybe not surprising, but it's really good to see that that continuity and that flow has been there. Yes. The Irish system in general has been much improved over a number of years. And that's from their juniors. Their sevens now are competitive as well. Their ladies and their men's side. And it's right throughout all the four provinces. Their sevens wasn't for a while really very much part of the mix eh? and uh, sort of like picked that up haven't they they have that i think just the concentration on the different you know, variants so you know, i think sevens has finally got a bit more of a push from their side and certainly their junior structures have been very strong not just at Leinster where most of these kids come from but certainly Ulster, munster and even up down in galway One or two players from Connet that uh, are in the mix here too. So Rabula will start the second half. Can the Fijians stay in the race? I must say stay in the race, points wise. A little chip kick through there from James Nicholson. And the Fijians looking for a counter-attack, and that's something they're very good at too. But the Irish defence has been well organised. Then it's always a question of what were the discussions that were just bouncing in field from Rabula. Maybe part of the discussion was let's play in their half of the field. That's uh, the Irish half. In the first half, they put a number of meters bringing it back from the blind side on the left hand side. Quickly out there from Corley. Back in field, Nicholson coming in from the blindside wing. And he's starting this game uh, with fair pace and then getting into the Fijian half of the field. It's a it's a big tournament, this, for the Irish in many ways. You know, their best, they finished second as a losing finalist in 2016. Otherwise, you know, they haven't really been in the race. So this, this is a real opportunity for them with a, a very good team that they've got. with the throw-in from Basilala. 
Oh, nearly an interception, but now this is what they like to do. Have they got men running with them? They have. Brilliant play this from the Fijians. Can they finish it off with a try? Yes, they can. <laughs> Captain Modi Murray with a try within two minutes of half time. Excellent running rugby here from the Fijians. It was the attempt at intercept that just opened up the gap. Oh, line out one for them. Matthew Lynch goes for the intercept. He misses it. It opens the gap. For a run down the middle and in support comes Mozart Murray. He has enough legs to get himself home. Strong handoff gets the try. And Fiji with all the running in the opening stands of the second half. Oh, buddy Murray there with a, the ball under the wrong arm. But uh, he only had one thing that he was going to do. They switched it over there to stop McColeen from walling him in. Excellent try then from the Fijians. It's what they're capable of in counter-attack, virtually from their own 22. The Irish don't want to rest on their laurels, and they won't, as we know them as a nation. Five meters in from the touchline. They're not going to allow the conversion. And Ravulo is very naughty because uh, he knew what the countdown was. The seconds that you've got to finish that off, and he didn't time it correctly. It almost puts a bit of a blight on. It was an excellent try. Set up for the running in by Motomari, the captain. Great kick in from Matthew Lynch. Taken by Nicholson, no problem with that at all. Or was there? Oh, there was a double knock there, so I'll come back for the scrum to Ireland. George Hedden just wants to have a chat to his forwards there. He's done well organised for this first up scrum in the second half. Sort of tight those pool standings are, so points difference important. Perhaps that was the chat. That is the other point, Rob. You're 100% right. You know, it's not just uh, the five points that you get from a, a victory and four tries, it's the points difference. And those pools will tell the story. Irish backline five meters back in sprinting position. Get to the opposition quickly. Oscar Crawley waiting for it. It's a good strong scrum there from Ireland. Now uh, Nicholson. The strong boy as well. James Nicholson on the, the right wing for Ireland. Taken up by Joe Hopes, the Ulsterman. There really has been quite an arm wrestle up front between uh, these two packs of forwards. And then searching for a gap somewhere along the line. Captain Dimit Mangan. Lynch. On to Brian Gleason. A little chicken wing from pass from him. There's going to be a penalty here uh, for a dangerous tackle, I think. Could have been. All the way back for that scrum. Ah, it's back to the scrum, yeah. <laughs> Penalty against uh, Moses Magoon, and he scored the first try there for Fiji. There's that scrum. Another strong one from Ireland. A bit of momentum up the left, and the right side comes in. Secure in the line out from Ireland. And here they come, the more hitting preciously close to the touchline. But they've managed to keep it in field. But it comes the way of Fiji now. <laughs> I 
I'll tell you what, there's a bit of verbal down there. Not foul language or anything, but just lots of encouragement, energy, yep. energy <laughs> whatever we want to call it. Good stop of the driving wall. She walked over a bit earlier. Fiji piling the numbers in. She and with the throw, and it goes Fiji's way. Basilala unable to make use of that. A bit of scrum here for the Fijians. There's a lot of back patting on the Fijian side too. Maybe there was some encouragement at half time too. And of course that try I think from their captain has really made the difference. Quite the opposite on the side of Ireland. See those handling errors. More upset with the way that the lineout isn't functioning at this present time. It's always a great weapon of theirs. Well, Philip Basilala needs a decent scrum here from Fiji. For him to get out of the way, he gets that. Now Ravula, the little chip kick through. They love this sort of rugby, the Fijians, and this is why they're able to score points. Here they come again, still at it, at the line, the finishing touches, what a try that is! What a like a rather potency final with the try. Such good running there and offloading at the right times. It's certainly got a section of this crowd on its feet, waving the Fijian flag. Lovely bit of running, just the nudge through at first coming from Rabula. Sets up nicely. Error coming from Ireland, but back on the inside. And it's just that free flying that we so often see in their sevens game. And the trial for Fiji, an excellent one from the own half, from a set piece. In Ireland a bit on the back foot at the moment. Patarisi Finau will be really happy with that try, as with the rest of his team. Which again just keeps them not too far away from that Irish score, bearing in mind Ireland have not scored any points yet in the second half. Fiji have two penalties, or rather two tries, and this man could well have got two points if he kicked the last conversion quickly enough. He's timed out. It's not going to happen again. This time the kick has gone absolutely wavered from a man who's kicked so successfully in this tournament. You see the back end of that try once again. Final pass coming from Nalasi. The try going to Finau. So Ireland have brought on Sam Prendergast in uh, the fly-off position. And uh, the man leaving the field is McEarly. So they'll do a little switch there. They've got a fair number of players that can play in different positions. I assume Matthew Lynch would go to the fullback position. We'll see. Fielded by number eight, Sir Masu. They're starting to find a little bit of momentum and don't seem to be worried the Fijians about playing in their own half of the field. And their style of rugby is such that they can really attack from anywhere. Goes up in the air from Ravula. It's a good kick there. Well fielded by Prendergast. Here's Matthew Lynch. Ravula decides he's going to run. I just think also that the game plan, Rob, of, of actually taking the, the counter attack to the Irish is, is really the way they should play. It's what's natural for them, instead of just trying to tackle them, you know, pack them with the, the forwards all the time. Well, keep them away from the driving more, which they've actually stopped very well in the second half. Keep them away from the scrum detail because that's not their best asset. To the back it goes to Joe Hopes. Now the urgency comes the way of the Irish. Brian Gleeson, he's had a busy game. Scored two tries in the process too. 
but the ball is wrenched away from him. There definitely seems to be a newfound energy in both of these teams, in fact. Lots of attacking opportunities, and that might go straight into touch. No, it doesn't. It bounces in field. Oh, yeah. Oh, he's left that alone. And now suddenly there's an opportunity here for the Fijians again. Quite happy to play a little bit of basketball on the rugby field, too. And when they get a sniff, they can be very dangerous. Ball falling out. Murray with uh, no a really hard charge, one could call it. From Rivula is not a good one. Given away possession number one, and uh, there's no one at the back for Fiji, so it's a long, long chase. This for Wakalala, all bouncing all over the place. All back he decides to kick it out, so it gets a decent enough touch finder. Ever a chance to run it? That would have been it. Oh. No defensive line really from Ireland, chasing that one up. So changes coming on for Ireland with uh, Fox and uh, Gus McCarthy who come on in the hooker position as well as Paddy McCarthy who won't have a number on his jersey. He'll be taking over in the scrum half position. Soon too. He's just ready? warming up, getting ready. Big man from Ulster. We'll take over one of the lock positions, either Joe Hopes or Evan O'Connell. So all a little bit scrappy from that line out. No difficulty. Pendergast quickly through the hands. That's sleight of hand from the Irish. Pendergast. A little inside out there from John Devine. And there goes Devine now. That's lovely passing. Now, can they do a switch out? Whether they try to do, and Nicholson will actually tackle without the ball. A little bit of pushing and shoving there from. There's more frustration from the Irish players. They just can't get anything continuity going. The passes aren't really going to hand. They're not getting the impetus they probably want against the Fijian side there. Walk might roll over. Yep, they haven't. Very good. Good to spin up to now. We have two late tackles. That stops now. Ball goes. Anything off the ball? Stops. That's what the penalty is for. And the two captains spoken to by the referee, Mone Pereira. So we've got. Captain, you've got two options. One is here, and another one goes to the touch line. So Fendergast gives the instruction, he'll take the penalty from closer to the touchline. But Gilles, just for one change that uh, we've seen from them with Nolasi coming on to the field. And haven't made the changes of uh, more of them. They'll probably come within the next uh, five, six minutes or so. 60 minute time Are you in line. or out? You've got two receivers. So come in, otherwise all the way to the back. Captain Moti just been wrapped on the knuckles by the referee. All back off white. Well, yeah, come the Irish then. They immediately run and Fox in the mix of things. Lost it. Out from Paulie. 
Here's Gus McCarthy, or rather Paddy McCarthy. That's good cleaning out there from the Irish, but again, the ball is pretty slow in coming out. Speed was not uh, their bedfellow on that occasion. On the line, Fiji. But still they come, they're very close to the line. Corley standing back, Short. allowing the big man to drive for the, the line. line Fiji. Can they get over? <laughs> yep, they can. A very important try that for Ireland. Nothing to do with bonus points or anything like that, but just stretching that lead away from the Fijians. Yeah, important try. Considering the way Fiji has come out in the second half, put them under pressure, scored the points. A bit of relief for the Irish side that got one over the line. Yeah. Try belonging to no, it's the regular from captain, backwards. Gus McCarthy. Or Paddy McCarthy, rather. <laughs> Conversion is good from Prendergast. And the lead is stretched. <laughs> Again, it's in the trenches. All the short pick and goes. Oh, and get over. An all important try. Just extend that lead. Maybe take a bit of a wind out of the sails of Fiji. They'll come out firing in the second half. Now, oh, those are the first points for Ireland in the second half. You know, a little bit more on the defence. Amazing that these two teams, Rob. Made 187 tackles in, in total in that first half. I mean, that's almost unheard of that. Or maybe not so much in modern day rugby. We always used to say over 100 tackles is uh, unheard of. Well, <laughs> we've now seen that. Down the line they go. Now, which way does this ball bounce? This, is, this could be interesting. It bounces away from the Fijians. No end, no Three end. Irishmen there, but somehow they've held on to no it. End. Ball is not out for plates. Playing the ball with the hands. Obviously, the, a ruck had been formed then, I assume. Well, we can only assume. Hands in the ruck. They were both on their feet. They both seemed legal. No, he said hands in the ruck there. So, a ruck had been formed. Two men over the ball. Ravula up towards... Uh, the halfway line. Ireland bring on another Number change. 12, sub. This time Henry McEarlean comes on. Uh, rather, Harry West comes on. On you. Open up. Open up. Ball. Someone. John Devine, the man who's come off the field. We should use pretty much most of their bench. It's all backwards. This is what they enjoy, these men from the Pacific Islands. They love running with a ball. They find space that nobody else can find at times. And then they give away a on silly ground, penalty. Playing, playing the ball on the ground when they... Their knees or their body was down on the ground. Mokanelaga was uh, the man running downfield there. He seems to... Have well, a little bit of a limp from the tackle. There's the tackle on him. Yeah. <laughs> Question about that. Silly penalty to give away. Five in. Now, keeping a clear head, particularly when you start getting a little bit tired, is important. Again, they're living on scraps, the Fijians, but they, they haven't given up the race, that I can tell you. Little top passes every now and then. Now, Finau. Tackle! Last try scorer. Release! Well, a couple of Sherman tanks that are flying in there as they get the ball. But when the opportunity comes, the pop Tackle. pass or running off the ball, they find a lot of space, the Fijians. Down at the moment. Uh, 
Don't necessarily mossy. Some big hits coming in from both sides. Ripping the tackle. It's unfortunately on the ground when it all happened. Down in front of us uh, Let's go. is the New Zealand team with their famous guitar. The manager and coach, Matthew Sexton. Well, let's just have a look at this at the moment. Uh, Australia are actually have, have edged into the lead against England, which uh, by 17 points to 14. There's a real bun fight there to see who potentially could end up second in this pool B. And it's the old foes, England against Australia. Australians ahead at the moment. Our right, cricket team off. is in, in England in the Test Series, 2-0. That's a can of worms you might be open here, Gav. <laughs> <laughs> it's all in the game, they say. All in the game. And right now, this game has the potential maybe to open up if Fiji can score again and convert a try. Puts them close to the Irish. Both teams now with bonus points with four tries. Of course, the Fijians know that they are out of the tournament as far as, you know, the ex-pool stages and the knockouts. Here. They'll still be playing rugby, but they won't be in a position to win anything. So they, they're playing with a fair amount of freedom, which they do anyway, don't they? Well, that they do. Right. Exciting to watch. The offloads and the tackle six, five, running eight, to space. Eight, five, six. Couple of big hits five, they're throwing in. Five, so Nalasi was the target for Noenoa, the last one. Same attempt again, this time it's won by the Irish. Back. Lots of time here for Prendergast. He looks to kick a torpedo downfield. And again, not interested are uh, Fiji Masiwini on that occasion of kicking the ball. I want to keep it in hand. That's a knock on. I think the Irish really just want to make sure their defence is, is properly organised. You know, it's hard when you've got players running at pace at you like this, but just to stay in their lines, keep their tracks. And that they've done reasonably well, although they've conceded four tries. The concern for them would be the line-outs that they've lost, particularly at, at such a huge attacking platform, not just for the uh, 20 side, for Lens to have all the sides. That malfunctions makes it, the knock-on effect is it's quite tangible for them at the moment, isn't it? The G uh, brought on Frank Lalogaivu. And he'll uh, come on for the injured player at the moment. Which is Patrice Finau. Who scored the, the last try for Fiji. In that tackle, he seemed to have twisted his leg somewhat. So he's off the park. Well, Agaivu will go into the centre position. In fact, he's gone to the final position, I think. Danny Sheehan also off the field. And very good shift he had. 15 tackles in that, 26 metres. He got himself about. <laughs> so Max Klein's on in his place on debut for the Irish under 20 team in the hooker position. So Paddy McCarthy with uh, the pudding. Peter McCarthy is Oscar Crawley, of course. So there's the long pass. Oh, that one's going to go into touch. Flicked on there from 
for Nuno Curling. That's just an opportunity. They've had the advantage in the scrums. They like, just could have held that one in a little bit longer. Get that penalty advantage, and they've got a free, for, you know, free joker basically to have an attack. And the option of the line out further up the park. James Nicholson with that uh, wayward pass on that occasion has actually also had quite a busy game. Oh, beautifully taken and some good run, strong running there as well from Gus McCarthy. Taken up by Sam Berman. Cooley. Found a little bit of space here now. Again, it's the quick pass that didn't quite work. This time coming from Osborne. Well, it's a quick throw in and uh, a little bit of an arm wrestle there for the ball from the Fijians, but it's come the way of Ireland. Hawley. Well, that pass might have been forward, but Murphy says, no problem, keep going. Langan that took it in. Pendergast, long pass there to Sam Berman. Strong tackle on him. Charlie Irvine right over that ball there. And they're getting a lot more possession right now, our island. But unable to make too much headway. And tackled back by the Fijians. Peter Gast searching and probing for that corner flag. That will be the kick downfield from the ruler. He's also not out. Taken by Lynch. Now Prendergast. Change of direction there. That's good work there to Sam to Berman. Never support him body weight. Never support him body weight. Could be quite a vital penalty to give away 22. at this moment in the game. Ireland right, just Fiji rather, we're just in a bit of an arm wrestle, head on a bit on the back foot. This might just release that pressure that they've been mounting on them throughout this little period. The question is how do Ireland manage the game for the next 15 minutes? They've got all the points that they need. They need to secure the victory, of course. What is it that they do, you know? And I think they're pursuing more and more points, which comes back to your point about points difference, points for and points against, ultimately, in the tournament. That might happen. Because when you're playing against a team like Fiji, you've got to be very careful. And I could come at you right up to the 80th minute. Ravula with his kick safely into touch. Gets them out of their 22, the Fijians. Brought on Lasara Voluma, the Fijians. Now those line outs still proving to be a problem for Ireland. Going from Gus McCarthy, Pentagos, it's a great ball to get. Nicholson with a run. Brilliant play this from the right wing. He really has done his bit in this game. He's been so much part of it. Where often wingers are basically left out wide. He's entered every equation just about that the Irish have offered. A line out that functions effectively. Straight up and high over at his Mangan. Just that pass on the inside, the gap opens up wide. A lot of work to do to finish it off. But he's done that in style, he's James Nicholson. No problem as well with uh, the conversion. A relieved Irish side. Easy enough try scored from the set piece. That might just have settled things. Um, 
at the end of the day. Again, we have a, a gremlin in the, the team sheets. Andrew Osborne, the man who uh, scored that try, not Nicholson. Fijians in front of the kickoff, so off they go. Back to the halfway line. So Ireland with a try from Osborne and the conversion from Prendergast. Uh, 18 points in the lead and must be feeling a lot more comfortable with just over 10 minutes left of this game they want to pursue more points if they can to come down at the end of the day to teams being above another one because of the points difference and nothing steady about that after the engagement both front rows too much movement on the set your first scrum set get stability let's move over a bit well, Josh Keener getting a talking to from the Seven referee green. there. Seven this is his first scrum. Alan bringing on Max Klein. Clear gap. So Oscar Corey from Leinster will have the put in here. Point. Set. His partner at fly half, Sam Pendergast, also from Leinster. He played in the URC, in fact, in the United Rugby Championship. Football game, a little bit of stray held up there from Philip Basilala. Uh, refereeing from one Ferreira just allowed the opportunity of uh, the game to flow. We'll come back now for the penalty. As Fiji bring on two more replacements, Rebecca Tobo and Semi Dakitani. Moses Magoo, the first try scorer of the match, is the man who's left the park. Uh, backpedaling somewhat, but they managed to hold on to it. The Fijians, a long pass on the right wing. There, Masuini hasn't had many opportunities, hasn't sought many opportunities either. Sort of broken play is very often the best friend of uh, the Fijians. Oh, the charge down, there's a chance. Oh dear. Max Klein unable to hold on to it and then kicks the ball away in disgust. And those are the standards that he sets 13, for himself. 1 3, 13. Got himself in the right place, got the charge down. And just reaching for it. Unfortunately, knocked it on. But just watch it now. Will we see it? Hoof the ball away. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
It wasn't the thing of beauty on that yet. <laughs> no, no. Not poetry yeah, emotion at all. Right, just wait time off. Ready to play this. Since you came on, we don't have that. On the bind, keep your gap, get your balance and stability. An area that Irish side will be very content with will be the scrum and set up a bit and go forward that they've had from the set piece. He is pleased with the line outs. Definitely a first where Fiji has been under a lot of pressure. So it was a decent scrum ball that they got. Um, Ravula unable to find his way through the gap. What a lot of energy these guys from Fiji. They really haven't given up, but the, what they have done now is given away a penalty. Preventing a contest. No doubt. They'll just kick for the corner once again and uh, rely on that. Reliable line out. Even O'Connell getting himself over that. A lot of effort into the game, number of tackles, a couple of carries. Numbers? Well, That's good effort from him. In fact, uh, he and Joe Hopes have uh, been a good combination in this match when they've been together. Struggling with a leg injury, he's staying on the park, but he really is uh, hobbling along the quite hard for EPG. Too rather a tough penalty that one. Didn't quite get behind the jump at all. He was side on. Yes, me, me, me. The throw in goes wide there from Kina. Musket from Prendergast. Which way does it bounce? Well, not favorably for the Irish. Did you have a, a scrum advantage right now? They have possession, so referee waiting to see if there is any advantage. This will be over pretty shortly, I would think. No, back they come. Oh dear. <laughs> a tackle behind the referee's back. Which must have been a just an error of judgment or <laughs> that he had the ball in hand, Oscar Pauli. No, there have been a couple of those just off the ball, a little bit late, not late enough to really give away a penalty. Bounce the ball, just not assisting. I don't quite know what the reason would have been for the tackle because they quite look there. There we go. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be a penalty. It potentially could be a yellow card. They do have a warning for that type of play. Captain 14. 14. I think the belief was that he actually was receiving the ball. It's clearly after the whistle. I gave you a warning for after that. There's a yellow card. No, after the whistle, you have to stop. Well, there's uh, the two yellow cards that are being offered here. Can the referees make sure the they stamp the authority on these games? The players know for certain that they've got to be extremely careful. Fine. 
So our player of the match for this game, with this little smile on his face there as he gets squirted with water by his players, is Ireland's Danny Sheehan, the hooker. It was a tight race at the end of the day. Brian Gleeson stood out as well. And Danny Sheehan gets uh, the nod eventually. He's off the bench, onto the bench at the moment, having done his bit in the course of the game. Your mother for Gene struggling with cramp too, I think. Clear access to the jumper. Bear in mind they're down to 13 men at the moment, Fiji, so it'll be hard to stop this uh, away, Irish onslaught as they keep heading for the line. Yeah, they come flying for the line. <laughs> I think that's a try, yeah. Gus <laughs> McCarthy gets his second try for Ireland. Two tries for Gus McCarthy, two for Brian Gleeson. Excellent play. Tender Gars, who hasn't kicked that well during the course of this tournament. And he's got two conversions since coming on as a replacement. And he's now got three. It's a lot uh, more comfortable on the ball. So this is what you could probably call a runaway try as the, the Irish forwards got the motion going. It's a little bit of work to do there for Gus McCarthy. He finished it by taking three players over the line. Ravula with a kickoff, absolutely perfect. Knocked on by Ireland. Quickly out there from Zach Carver. That's good now. They still continue to toe close in the Fijians. Looking for the big men to carry. That's one of them there, Lasada Voluma. Good ex extension of uh, advantage there by Mone Ferreira. Now let's just move off. Just move off. No. There's, there's a lot of commentators on the pitch now since you all came on. I suggest you have a chat to them. Peter Gomez, do my job. Yes, chat. Chat. Well, there's been a swing of fortunes as well in terms of the England-Australia match, which has a lot of significance. England are apparently back in the lead. They did lead early on. They then went uh, behind against Australia, and now they're back in the lead again. So that's the situation with Pool B. Just look and say, it's an all-or-nothing situation there for England and Australia. Clear gap in stability. Cross. Just wonderful how competitive this tournament has been. With all the countries operating. So all the countries, all 12 of them, of course. And Fiji, despite the fact that they can't make the semis, they only have one point. They certainly are giving everything they've got. Good to see. From the karma. Kevin Arsenal making the tackle on that occasion, but slowing down the ball carrier. Come on. 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 Come Injuries taken their toll to an extent, and of course, also the yellow card, which hasn't helped their cause, the Fijians. So, tap and go is the call this time for Nalassi. Keeping the ball in hand is something the Fijians enjoy doing. Fiji in the background. Is this where the game's going to finish, or 
Can they get a try to finish it off? Still coming, still going. That's great passing that from uh, the Fijians. And yes, they are going to get another try. And Navona Vona is the man credited with that try. Now we heard from the referee a little bit earlier on that there were too many commentators in the Irish team. And that's one thing they also want to think about very carefully when they beat tougher opposition. And although this has been tough opposition in a lot of ways, the scoreboard doesn't initially reflect that. But it's been a bruising encounter. Time is running. Time is on, and they, they've got to make that kick as quickly as possible. You can see the, the clock winding down. 60 seconds. Navula will not be taking the kick. He's struggling with a leg injury. And they're going to go and fetch the ball, number one. And then Lalagai Vu will be taking the kick. It's not going to go straight, so that will be it. A game of 74 points here between Ireland and Fiji with the Irish coming out victors. They had to work hard for that victory, but uh, they certainly, if you consider the fact that they scored four, five, six, seven tries, just counting through my score sheet here against uh, the five of Fiji. So really plenty of tries in this game of excitement too but it was a little bit of a grind one feels for the Irish to get themselves into a better position they didn't start well after half time the Irish but as the game progressed so they did their bit now the final score line here at the Donny Craven Stadium in the middle game one to come still is Ireland 47 BG 27. So everybody shaking hands. They know they've been in a rugby match, all those players. If we have a look at the statistics as well. I'll tell you that you know Ireland will be happy. They won four turnovers and they had to work really hard for those as well. Fiji, far too many penalties that they conceded but 17 handling errors for the Irish and these are things that they would really want to try and improve have a look at the tackle count on both sides that's close up to 300 tackles made in the course of one match it's an incredible statistic that it really is and both teams struggle a bit with the line outs at times but uh, otherwise uh, there was an evenness about the contest for a, a large part of the game when the occasion demanded it the Irish could turn on the taps and get the points that were needed. So there are lots of backpacking here to uh, the players there. And Rob Kempson is downstairs to do the interviews. Matsumori, you must be very proud of your boys' efforts. Yeah, uh, um, first of all, I want to thank the Almighty for today's game. And to be honest, I'm really proud of the boys for the effort they've given. They really climbed in, particularly towards the latter part of that second half. Um, yeah, uh, just a few mistakes from us, but we'll go and fix our mistakes. A few words for your boys? Um, yeah, uh, just a word for my boys. Uh, I'm really proud of them for the effort and the energy they gave for the good fight we had uh, today. Grant, thanks for your time. Thank you. So the Irish are assembled in a circle in the middle of the field and no doubt part of the discussion will be the commiseration as well after the death of Greg Oliver, the father of Jack Oliver, the scrum half of the Irish who sadly died yesterday in uh, a paragliding accident. So the Pool B standings, there are Ireland with those 13 points. Brilliant play from them despite the fact that they drew against England but they picked up everything there England in second position at the moment but England is still playing Australia 
and that might also change somewhere along the line. Australia are ahead of England at the moment. So, beautiful mountains around Stellenbosch. Yeah, and it's full time then. Ireland 47, Fiji 27. 